Hey guys, welcome back. Episode 73, Light Warriors Unleashed podcast. And I am currently recording from my old bedroom as a kid in my parents' house in Winnipeg. And I'm about to leave back tomorrow for Costa Rica. And these thoughts just came through and I wanted to share them on this week's podcast in my solo episode about some things that I've learned while being here in Winnipeg, some observations, some dynamics of my own changes in life that I've experienced and just some really cool stories that most of you have never heard in connection with my life. And like I always say, like, I love this podcast because I get to show up and I show up authentically everywhere in social media, but I get to tell stories here and give you insights into my world, into my own expansion, into my own elevation, into how I'm moving through life and take what you desire from this. Listen in, laugh at me, you know, step into the space of stuff. But there's some key learnings that have moved through my field since being here that I desire to impart into you, onto you, into your energy if you want to take them and allow yourself to discover, allow yourself to go there, allow yourself to be in this space of moments of time with me and drop in and enjoy this process as you move through it. And I'm grateful that you're here. I'm grateful for all the things. And just like I say, every single episode, if you feel called snap some of the video of this, you know, take a picture of the recording, tag me on Instagram, share out a thought process in connection with what you've learned. And let's get the word out for this podcast. Give us a review if you've never done that before too. And just allow other people to come into the field to see this, to be with this, to be in this energy space. Because as we all continue to expand, our acceleration of light is calling others forward. So if you feel called, share it out. And I'm just so grateful for all of this and grateful that you're here. And no further ado, let's chat. Episode 73, Light Warriors Unleashed podcast. Well, guys, I am here right now in my bedroom in the house that I was about 15 years old in um, and, and stayed into this place till I was 18 and then moved out, came back for like a year. But this was like the bedroom where things happened in my life where I was a teenager. And I was called to jump on and record this podcast right from here in my bedroom tonight before I fly out tomorrow in the energy of what I've learned over the last like nine days of being back in Winnipeg. And for those of you that don't know, I moved out uh, out of this province when I was about 23 years old with an ex-boyfriend and moved to Ontario. And that's how I actually got to Ontario was with that relationship. He was native to Niagara Falls and he we were being called back to do the Amway business. And I had never been like, and and some of you guys may not know, and you may be too young to know, but Amway was like the first ever network marketing business that there was. And my ex-boyfriend at the time was really involved. He'd been in it for like 10 years. And that's actually how I got into personal development was through him and through the Amway business. And it opened up my eyes to all this diversity in life and I learned so much with my time in Amway that it opened me up to be able to talk to people in rooms and all these different kinds of things. And I remember, you know, I actually went by the house that him and I lived in here in Winnipeg while I was here. And I just did a story on it today on Instagram talking about who I used to be then. And this podcast today is going to be a mishmash of reflections of growth and some pieces that you're going to be able to take from into your own life and start to maybe consider looking at, reflecting on, looking back at certain parts of your world that made changes for you, maybe giving gratitude to some people that you haven't been able to do that before because the experience that you actually had with them was so much different than you remember it to be, right? And I just want you to feel and see through this experience I'm about to deliver to you um, and take what you desire from it and take what you need from it and take what's coming through in your field from it. I am literally, it's like 8.30 p.m. right now here in Winnipeg. I fly out in the morning. I am not put together, let's say, for camera. I don't have a ring light. It's not the best actual like screen that I have on. I'm not in a place that's well lit. Like I literally, this is my closet. Oh my God, if you guys have ever heard me tell stories about my closet organizer that I thought about when I was like 17 years old and I was like, it's going to be like, this the most amazing organizer ever. This is the organizer and the screws are still falling out of the wall um, and the shelves are still crooked and my dad uses it as his own closet. 
So that is the place. And some of you may be like, if you're watching the video, you may be like, show us. I'm not going to show you. Just believe me. Because <laughs> my dad may not want you to see all of his jerseys that he has in this closet. But for those of you that don't know, I live, I'm born and bred in Winnipeg, Manitoba. I lived all the winters here and all of its juiciness. I was that rebel as a younger child and teenager that refused to wear uh, winter boots. I was that girl. And I'm sure some of you are not surprised about that at all, that I was rebelling against things like snow, you know, in my lifetime. And I always felt, though, like living here and being in this space that there was always something else for me. And it's not like I didn't appreciate life here. I just knew there always was something. And I didn't know about that something until I got into Toronto and moved to Ontario about what that was. And it was always this energy of like possibility that was moving through my field. I was never content with the life I had. I was always striving for more. I was that employee that worked in job functions that was like um, always accelerating. How can I be the best? How can I sell the most? How can I move that forward? How can I learn more? How can I get promoted? And that was an energy that always moved through my field. So even looking back and even going back to the house that Jamie, my ex and I lived in, you know, looking at the version of me that lived there. Now, Jamie and I started dating when I was like 23 to like 28, somewhere in that time space, 22 to 28, somewhere in there. I don't remember years that well or like like ages of stuff because I I feel like I've lived so many timelines in this life already that I can't remember a lot of those things. People are like, how do you not remember how old you were? I was like, I just don't remember how old I was. But I remember feeling super jealous in our relationship, which means, and if I look back on this an equivalent to, I always felt like I wasn't enough and I always, and I wasn't feeling worthy to actually be with a man that would honor me. Now, I made up a lot of things that happened in our relationship, but he also hid a lot of information and hid a lot of stuff from me. So it only accelerated my um, confidence in myself, right? And looking back at all that, it was always a reflection inside of me, me, him mirroring back my own disconnect within my own self, my own disconnect within my own energy field, right? My own disconnect within how I was never in my power. I was always giving it to other people by choice. Like I chose to, even though at some times, you know, the victim Colleen may have said they took it from me, but I don't live in victim energy and I haven't for a long time, you know, a long time, like a long time. I'm in that space of like ownership of all the things that have happened. But sometimes, you know, in life we get caught up in stuff, right? We get caught up in the storylines. We get caught up in the spaces of stuff. And so I just remember, like, I just kept trying to become what I thought he wanted me to be. He wanted dinner made. He wanted a woman like this. He wanted a woman that cleaned the house. I worked full time too. And he wanted and desired this, but I had so many other needs that weren't being met in our relationship. But at the time I was like, that's okay. I don't need my needs met. If I can get his needs met, then he'll meet my needs. And that was a thought process, maybe not consciously that I was going through, but in action that I was moving through. So unconsciously, I kept doing that. I kept looking for approval. I kept looking for the next thing. I kept looking for that space of time. And, um, it's just interesting when we drop back into the space. Now, the house that we lived in was um, a two-story house. It was a townhouse at the end of like eight townhouses. And we had the corner lot. We actually had a yard that we never participated in. I was super disconnected at the time, the nature. I didn't like being outside. I would prefer to be inside in air conditioning. Um, so you can tell the vibrational energy that I lived within. And this was at, you know, 23 to 25 years old. Well, I guess we moved to Ontario when I was 23. So 22 years old inside of the space. And we smoked a lot of weed, you know, and that was like our way out. And when we would smoke weed, then we would be connected. And then we would, then he would have desires to have sex. And it wasn't when he was sober or like not smoking weed that we would connect. We would always have fights about stuff and always be in this transition of fighting. And I, at one point in time, when we moved to Ontario, I said, I'm done smoking weed, like I'm done. And this has been a pattern in my world where I go into something and then I go, yeah, I've tried it. I've experienced it. I'm good. Let's go and move into something else. And it's interesting to watch how a lot of my life, I 
chose to do things for others because I thought that that's what you do. You sacrifice in your relationships. You step into the space. You maneuver through. You um, you experience things. You know all that kind of stuff. And it was like that that dynamic of like running through my world of like, oh, that's okay. But when we moved to Ontario, I stopped smoking weed. He didn't, even though he said he did. So he was like hiding smoking weed. And then I went back to work in Ontario. We had sold the house, had a bunch of cushion money, savings money that we were supposed to live off of for a year, two years and be able to maneuver while he built the Amway business. And all this stuff didn't end up happening. In retrospect, and looking back at it now, we were not meant to be together. We were just in the wrong partnership, trying to fit, you know, the square peg into a round hole. And some days we were able to edge it out and some days it felt okay, but it just wasn't the right relationship. You know, I was diminishing myself. He wasn't able to speak his truth, of course, because if he was hiding stuff, then he wasn't able to speak his truth. So I just looking back, I went through this whole mechanism over the last few days of being here in Winnipeg or the last nine days of being here in Winnipeg and just really looking at going, you know, that version of me and that availability that I had inside of this space served me. She made decisions. She got to Ontario. She made choices. You know, the day that I decided to end the relationship, I had to have courage and be bold, not knowing what to do. I didn't have a job at the time. I had no idea what I was going to do. Now this whole story is like a whole other endeavor, but all I knew at the time in my life was I wasn't supposed to be with him any longer. That's the only clarity I had. What I didn't want, that one thing, I didn't know what I wanted. I didn't know who I was. I didn't know any of this because I had started dismantling this energy going, most of my life is a facade, which it was. And now I'm like, holy shit. I don't know who I am. I don't know what I want. I don't know how to create money in my, like I knew how to create money, but I didn't know where I wanted to create money. I didn't know any of this. Right. And when I left this relationship, my parents had bought me a saxophone in high school. And for those of you guys that have been following my transition, I'm super musically inclined. My number one form of genius is actually in music and sound coordination. And I can pick up instruments and learn how to play them like really easily. I can hear tonality. I can hear beats and music. I can follow beats. I'm like all in for music. And I settled on the saxophone in high school. Um, and it was always so easy for me to play. Like my band teacher always said to me, like, if you actually would practice, imagine where you could go with this. Like I could have probably had a career playing instruments in my lifetime. Now I'm creating an album, uh, playing instruments that are more rooted in indigenous and root nature energy. Um, so it's come back around anyways, but I had to sell my saxophone in order to get out of that relationship. And at the time I said to my saxophone, I will get you back. And now the saxophone is transmuting and transforming into a flute that I will be getting from Brazil and a custom flute of a high frequency elevation that I'll be starting to play. And you guys are going to start to hear some stuff come through and I'm going to start to play it, you know, through Instagram reels and like really own the vibration of the flute moving through me. And I think that my flute in like grade school and my saxophone set me up to be able to hold the energetic capacity of this like really rooted Brazilian flute that I'm about to purchase this year. And I'm like, it's so exciting for me to feel that in my body and to hold that in my body and to actually really be in that alignment. Right. And so in order for me to gather liberation and freedom, I had to sell my saxophone to get out because I had one paycheck from Tim Hortons. I had my saxophone money and I was trying to figure out where to live. Now at the time that was like 20 years ago, almost, or like not even like 15 years ago, so you could get places to rent pretty cheap in Ontario at the time. You know, I ended up finding a rental home, I call it, with rental parents, a house. They had a house and they were renting out a room, I had my own bathroom and I had my own fridge downstairs, but we shared the kitchen space. And I, yeah, ended up renting out a room for them for three years while I started the business, while I got my shit in order. And I still didn't have my shit in order when I moved out, but I thought I did, which is a whole other fucking podcast but they supported me. That's where my love of animals came in. And I think the animals actually opened me up because before I moved there, I was that girl that would be like, oh, I can't get dog hair on my pants. Um, and I was super upset if I'd go to people's houses and I would have hair on me. Like that was like a thing. So you can tell the vibrational alignment that I was in. I started with my spiritual mentor while I was at that place, um, staying in that, literally she came to our first meeting to my house there in my room 
in this rental, my rental parents' house. So just like looking back on all of this, and although that was in Ontario that I had that place, but the decisions I made in my life from that point of view, from that house led me to that moment of time 14 years ago where I met my first spiritual mentor. Although I know, and I know this to be true that I had more of them, but I didn't consider them. I never paid anyone money to be my spiritual mentor up until that time. Um, all the decisions came through. So where I am today was from that house. Well, from all the decisions before that, but from really from that house, when we decided to move to Ontario and I said, yes, even though I think deep down inside of me, I knew we weren't supposed to be together, but something was calling me to Ontario. And I didn't know at the time it was God universal alignment or all the things to get me there to start to open up the pathway of my levels of expansion. But, you know, I, I sat here over the last nine days in different environments. You know, I went with my parents to uh, a dinner party with their friends. Um, I went with them to a brunch. I was at my brother's house. I spent time with my nephew and I was in the mall. I went and did some things. I drove around and, you know, my parents have two cars. So I drove around in one of their other vehicles as well when I could. Um, and I just noticed a lot of stuff. You know, I, I dropped into the energy here of like feeling the energetics and I love, I love Canada and what it brought for me. I love the diversity of Canada. I love the seasons of Canada, but I watch the excuses and the energy that runs through the mechanism here and not necessarily in the relationships I have, although there is some there too, but it's, it's a lot in the calibration of energy that moves through this country. And it's one of those things that it's like, we can't get that, or um, that's not possible here, or it's one of those things like, we don't believe in that, you know, and I honor everyone wherever they're at, and the decisions they're making for their life and what they're doing and moving forward. But I even watch my mom's like, we can't get raw dairy, right? And I'm like, let's see. So of course, me trying to prove a point goes to Vita Health, which is here in Winnipeg. Now, granted, Winnipeg is minimal, okay? This isn't Toronto. This isn't Ontario where you got Whole Foods and Nature's Emporium and all the stuff in Ontario. It is true. They are limited. However, well.ca ships to this house because I proved it out. I actually shipped something to this house from well.ca, showed my mom the website that she could get all different kinds of stuff from there, all different kinds of clean things. Like my tampons come from there, my protein powder. She can get any gluten-free pasta she wants. Any of the stuff that she naturally would eat, she can get from there. But I went to Vita Health and I picked up grass-fed beef. Now, they also have access to farmers here that they can buy their beef from, which is amazing. Organic vegetables, they can get there. Not a lot of selection, but some. Um, but I found raw cheddar. I actually found some raw um, cheese and I also found raw butter. And I showed my mom after, it doesn't say raw on it, because technically it's illegal to have raw dairy in Canada. Shocking and surprising because it's so good for you. But they'll list it as unpasteurized or they'll say real cream. Um, there's no pasteurization that happens in raw dairy. So it's like almost like the energy that moves through here is that we can't find it. We can't get that. That's not possible. When I feel like it's almost the excuse that we've been given in humanity that we're not open to looking at other solutions or we think it's going to be harder or this is moving through. Now, I get people have to do what they got to do. And is it more expensive here? For sure, it is. However, I bet that if you really look and you start asking questions, you can find a raw dairy farm. They're connected to a bunch of farmers. I went to one of their houses. And these guys are hunters and farmers. And, you know, I know if anything ever happened in the world, they would support my parents and they would be taken care of. But I bet you they know a raw dairy farmer. They, I bet you they can get raw dairy. But it's just a matter of, are they willing to do the work to actually align all the pieces? I don't know. So as this moved through my field, I started to look within my own self and go, am I willing to do the work? Am I committed? to this dynamic? Am I committed to the energy I desire? Am I committed to the things that are moving through my field? Am I committed? And the energy came back as yes. 
However, I've been fucking slacking for a while. I've been riding the flow train for a bit, you know, like I've been doing well, but I'm all, I've almost like, I, it almost like I needed to come to Winnipeg to break the cycle that I was in. That was like kind of limiting the energy of my expansion. I got here and I went boom. And it's almost like dropping back here allowed me to see the things that I was maneuvering within there that I wasn't allowing myself to step into. And it just opened right up. Like I probably have had mm, close to the highest week of revenue, you know, at least probably in the top 10 highest week of revenues ever uh, in my whole business structure being in Winnipeg, which if you would have asked me this when I came to Toronto in March, totally different energy there. And it's almost like I surrendered into where I was coming into and didn't drop my vibration but allowed myself to come here into this experience instead of resisting the experience. So this podcast is going to launch on December 22nd, a Friday. Some of you may not listen to it till later on after this, but if you do catch it in real time, the day of, the next day, or whatever it is, in your spaces of your family holiday cheers, your family endeavors, your New Year's endeavors, can you go in to these scenarios, wherever you're going, whatever's happening, and still keep your vibration high and keep your alignment in your truth and still speak your truth into the world without diminishing your light, but also going in to surrender into the space of honoring? You know, like I respected my parents, although after a couple of old fashions and some bourbon, I was drinking with some guys on Friday night when we were out for dinner at my parents' friend's house. I did start to show pictures of my dad when he used to perm his hair. Um, so I don't think he appreciated that, but that's okay. Like, that's just what life was like back then, right? Um, so I did get a bit funny and we did, like, I did create some cool relationships and stepped in because there was, like, all my parents' age couples and then a couple of them had their kids there. And so I was, after I met everybody and did all the things, I was hanging out with the kids, especially after we started drinking old fashions and we were all, like, hanging out together, right? And it was neat to just be here right? To just be here. I look to my life. And although, you know, I am so blessed that Costa Rica is like a a huge blessing in my world. And I can be in my life a lot more than I did in, in Manitoba, in Ontario, in Canada, because I choose that. And the nature environment in Costa Rica calls me to that. It's like if I try to hustle in Costa Rica, it's not working. It doesn't work. Like it just doesn't work. The vibrations don't align. You'll get shut down. Your car will break down. You'll be stuck on the side of the highway for two hours until you surrender in and then go, fine, I won't hustle any longer. Like seriously, that's a thing. Like she holds you to this availability. But in Canada, we get, we get into this rigmarole of this hustle, of this movement, right? Of energy. So I watched myself flow through some experiences. Like today, I watched my mom make tortillas, like meat pies from scratch. And she comes into the office after I did a training today with her like um, rolling pin. And she goes, I was channeling, she says this to me, I was channeling my my mom and my grandmother today because they all owned this rolling pin. It's been passed down. I don't think I'm going to get the rolling pin because seriously, like I'm not a baker. (laughs) Could I use it? Maybe. But um, I think it's going to stay with her for a while. It may be in the will, you know, like when she passes like in 40 years from now or something. Maybe she's going to be alive longer than me. Who knows? Right. But like. I watched her enjoy today, create something, aligning in something and being. That's all she did today. She took a couple calls. Maybe she was on Facebook a bit. She's watching a Hallmark movie right now upstairs. And she was being, even though she was doing activities, she was still being in her life today. And I watched that transpire. I was out for a meeting this morning. Um, I then had running around to do. I came back, did a training, did some work, had a nap, went to the bank, had dinner with my parents, then did some more work, jumped on a client call. And here we are right now. And it's interesting, but that felt so much like flow for me that it didn't felt, it didn't feel busy. I also packed. And by the way, I'm under with my weight, just telling everybody that I'm under my luggage, even though you should see the shit that I'm bringing back. The beautiful experience stuff, I mean. But thinking about this in the field of, it's like, no matter where we live, and no matter what the energy is outside, 
And no matter what the calibration is coming into your field, and no matter how many purple lights they put up to track you and how many trackers in your phone that someone's recording me right now, recording this, no matter what is happening in the world this way, how can you choose to align yourself in the life that you really desire? Because this is the life I desire. I desire to come and take my nephew out for a date. You know, I said to my brother, whether this is ever going to happen or not, I said, look, I want you and Nikki to talk about it. That's my sister-in-law. But I'd love it if I could have Mason this summer for a week or two to come to Costa Rica with me. I'll come pick him up. I'll pay for his flight. And he can come experience Costa Rica. And so there's a lot of red tape around that. My brother needs to make sure he's safe and all the things. And they need to discuss it. Whether it will ever happen or not, I don't know. But that would be really cool. And if I can bring a 10-year-old into the energy of Costa Rica, I can help him heal, move through, accelerate his intuition. Imagine being with me for a week. Like seriously, even if you're 10, dude, that picks up, right? And I desire to have a life like that. I desire to be able to come to Canada and to hang out with my parents for nine days and to meet their friends and to do this experience and to say to my friends in Costa Rica, whatever you need, send it there. I will bring it back. I will bring it back. I will pack up luggage and bring it to everyone. It is not a burden for me to step into this. This is an actual amazing connection of energy that I desire to play in the field with. I desire to hold this. I desire for us to come together in this. I desire a life where I can be a great friend, where I can expand in experiences, where I can come in and honor my parents and the life that they live and see their friends and do the things, you know, and that I can still have freedom in my days to maneuver. I desire this life. So as I dropped back into the field here, you know, there's always the things like I am in my old bedroom in my parents' house. They have a certain belief system and some of our values align and some of them don't. But I watched us communicate this time in a way that we've never communicated before, where I said to my mom, like, I'm like, mom, I, I eat mostly carnivore, like, and I don't eat salads or vegetables or grains usually except for rice. And, and she went out the next day and bought more fruit, even though the fruit's shit here in Canada, she still did. And she's like, I got some mangoes and some kiwis and I got a pineapple and I got some berries, even though she ate them all. <laughs> And it's just that movement within us. So I want you to consider and take this into your field of where in your life right now, maybe you're not allowing a certain experience to come through. And I'm not saying you have to sacrifice yourself at all whatsoever. I held my energetic capacity here. I held it. I held my truth. I held my power. I never diminished my light. I put in boundaries when they were necessary and needed. I spoke into the space of things, but the energy came together. And I'm not leaving here feeling heavy like I have the last couple times in Canada that I came. I'm not leaving here with the weight of like, oh my God, I got to get out. Although my body is craving the sunshine. My tan is almost white now. Like I'm almost white. <laughs> like I like even like my tan line is like, mm, yeah, hardly there. I'm craving my house and all my things. But I'm also so grateful for this experience. And nine days was the longest I've stayed since I moved and I could be here in the purity of its light. So I just wanted to share that with you, my reflections in connection with this experience, what I moved through, what transpired for me and whatever you take from this, take it. And I just want to say, obviously this is the last podcast before Christmas. And for those of you that celebrate and are moving into that space, amazing. Hold your energy in it still. You do not have to become anything that you are not. Be you and shine brighter and illuminate more and expand more into this energetic capacity because that is what's needed right now in the world and you are being called forward for that. And allow yourself to be present in your life and to be in love and in joy and laughter and connection and drop in in the present moment. Don't worry about tomorrow or worry about next week or when you go back to work. Be here right here, right now. And that's where the power really is. So just sending you guys out lots of love, lots of beautiful experiences, lots of light. And I will see you guys 
in the next episode. All right. Have a beautiful, beautiful holiday.